Hello students, welcome to my channel Easy Learning. Today I am going to discuss about the part 1 of Conduct Disorders and its Nursing Management. This includes definition of conduct disorder, epidemiology, ICD-10 classification, clinical features and the etiology. So before going to start the class material, let us discuss a clinical scenario. A 15 years old male has been brought to the OPD with the chief complaints of deliberate fire setting in home, frequent aggressive behavior like fighting with friends and the neighbors, then frequent breathing up of animals without any apparent reason. There is also observation of destroying of the property running away from home for overnights, stealing money and valuables and having a history of suicidal attempt. So after taking detailed history and MSc and observing his aggressive as well as self-harm behavior, the adolescent has been admitted in the ward with a diagnosis of conduct disorder. So students, keeping in mind this clinical scenario, let us learn today's class on conduct disorder. So first let us go to the definition. Conduct disorders are characterized by repetitive and persistent pattern of dissocial, aggressive and defiant conduct. That means we can see three pattern. There is a dissocial, aggressive and a defiant conduct is observed. There are many activities which is leading to dissocial conduct when they are trying to violate the rights of others as well as not following the rules of society. Aggressive behavior as well as the defiant conduct that means where we can see the resistance as well as the disobedient conduct among the children. But it has to be repetitive in nature that means which are done again and again and persistent that means continuously and repetitively these things has been of this conduct has been observed among the children and the adolescent. Next conduct disorder evolves over time period and diagnosis is made when the conduct is far from excess of the mischief of children and the adolescents. Usually what we have seen during the period of adolescence and the childhood, the children and the adolescents they are involving or indulging in many kind of mischievous conduct and the behavior. So this diagnosis can be made if it is far from the excess of this kind of mischievous conduct. Then only this kind of diagnosis can be made. Next let us go to the epidemiology. It is common in males and it is diagnosed for the under the age of 18 years even before puberty also it is diagnosed. The lifetime prevalence rate in the general population could be ranged from the 2% to maximum up to 10%. Children with conduct disorder are often categorized as antisocial personality disorder in the late adult life. That means if the conduct disorder persists towards the adult life after the 18 years of age, if it has a chronic course, that time it can be categorized as a antisocial personality disorder. Next let us go to the ICD-10 classification. So under ICD-10 it is coded as F91. So F91 is coded as conduct disorder where already we have seen, already we have uh, uh, I have discussed the definition where we could have seen there is a repetitive and a persistent dissocial, aggressive as well as defiant conduct is observed. So this kind of dissocial, aggressive and the defiant conduct, there are many examples are there like frequent lying, then uh, indulging in uh, different kind of physical violence, then uh, stealing, robbery maybe doing some kind of activities like which are leading to cruelty towards animal. So there are many examples of this kind of dissocial as well as disobedience as well as the aggressive conduct. So these all examples or the few examples of those kind of behavior coming under the F91 category that is a conduct disorder. Next F91.0 that is conduct disorder within family context. Here what 
it means this kind of dissocial and aggressive behavior that already we have discussed just now so that has that is present but it is almost entirely confined to the home city or the family context that means they are doing this kind of dissocial activity as well as aggressive behavior within the home setting or the family environment or within among the with the family members they are doing it is not going outside the family context so there we can diagnose in the f91.0 next is that f91.1 so here it is characteristic characterized by combination of dissocial as well as aggressive conduct those two are there dissocial conduct is there aggressive conduct is there with significant abnormality in individual relationship with other children that means dissocial and the aggressive conduct is present but they are unable to get integrated or unable to mingle with their group mates or the peers so that is in the unsocialized conduct disorder and they are observed as to be isolated isolating from the others and they are also observed there is they are getting the rejection from their peer peer mates or the from their like same age children next is that f91.2 that is socialized conduct disorder so this category is applied to the conduct disorder which involves persistent dissocial and the aggressive behavior same like the unsocialized conduct disorder this dissocial and the aggressive behavior is present but it occurs among those adolescents who are generally well integrated with their peer group but in the unsocialized group you have to remember that they are unable to mingle with their peer group but in the socialized conduct disorder they can mingle with their same group or the some group they can get involved or get linked into but in both the cases there is this social act is present and the aggressive behavior is present and often here in the socialized conduct group and often the peer group with whom they are getting integrated or with whom they are mingled with they also consist of those kind of youngsters who involved in delinquent or the dissocial activity though it is not a mandatory criteria that they have to be involved in delinquent activities as per icd 10 but usually it has been observed that they are involved in many kind of delinquent activities and with those peer group the socialized conduct group disorder uh, adolescents they can mingle very easily next is that f91.3 that is oppositional defiant disorder so it is seen in children below the age group of 9 to 10 years so here what we can observe we observe the defiance behavior like the bold kind of resistance is observed there is a disobedience is present and they are very provocative in nature or provocative behavior they display but there is absence of aggression is present before the classification that already we have discussed in everywhere we this aggressive behavior is a common features but in the oppositional defiant disorder here aggressive act which are violating the rights of others is not a mandatory criteria so it has to be there is if it is not present then only we can go and diagnose as a oppositional defiant disorder within the age group of below 9 to 10 years children so usually they tend to be angry these children also they tend to be angry very easily and they very easily get annoyed by the other people we for to the, those people for to whom they blame for their own mistakes they get annoyed to them only and they are blaming their own acts also they are blaming they just put their blame on those kind of persons they have a low tolerance of frustration level so these are observed in the oppositional defiant disorder children so i hope it is very clear we have to remember f91 is a conduct disorder where the main characteristics are the dissocial aggressive and the defiant conduct is present and it has to be repetitive and persistent in nature and the under the classification 91.0 they are doing in the family context some are in the unsocialized conduct group and some are in the socialized conduct group and one is the 
oppositional different disorder which is basically diagnosed for the children below the 9 to 10 years. So let us go to the next slide. So now let us discuss about the clinical features. Here already that we have discussed just now. So various dissocial conduct, aggressive conduct and the different conduct are the main characteristic characteristic features of conduct disorder children and the adolescents. So what are those examples of all those kind of conduct? So let us see. So few examples like frequent lying, frequent lying to their parents, to the teachers, it is present. Then there is an excessive level of fighting. This fighting may be within the family, maybe friends, neighbors or maybe the relative also. There is a destruction of property, maybe private property, even the public property also, they don't hesitate to destroy. Next, stealing and robbery is common. Running away from home and school. Truancy is a very common feature of this group of children and the adolescents. Then physical violence. Indulgence of many kind of physical violence like setting fire, use of weapons, it is pretty much common among the children and the adolescents with the conduct disorder. Then cruelty towards animals. It is a another it is another uh, features of the conduct disorder individuals. Beyond this also with this kind of different kind of characteristics features some secondary complications also occurs with them or the consequences occurs with them like they may be involved in substance misuse or substance dependence group. They also may have a there may be also the unwanted pregnancies due to their risk behaviors. Then criminal record may be very common suicidal tendency or the attempts also has been observed among this group of population. Again with these features or the characteristics features one important uh, um, one important criteria we have to remember as per ICD-10, the diagnosis of conduct disorder is not recommended unless the duration of this behavior, whatever we have discussed as now, these behaviors has been present for 6 months or above. So it has to be present for minimum for 6 months and above, then only we can go for a diagnosis of conduct disorders. Okay. I think the students you have it is very clear to you different characteristics features examples of different dissocial as well as aggressive and the deviant, deviant behavior. Next let us discuss about the etiology. So etiology is very complex here. There are many factors that may play a role or interaction of between different biological as well as psychosocial factors play a role in the causation of conduct disorder. So they are genetic, biochemical, organic and the neurological factor and the psychosocial factors. So let us discuss one by one. First is the genetic factor. As most behavioral disorder have some kind of degree of or relatedness with the genetic influence, so conduct disorder is also no exemption. So in the twin studies, it has been observed that studies with the monozygotic and the dizygotic twins, it has revealed that there is a genetic influence in the causation of a conduct disorder. Again, among those children and adolescents who are having the conduct disorder, it has been found to be associated with the alcoholism and the personality disorder of their parents. That means among the parents there may be alcoholism may be present and personality disorder especially the antisocial personality disorder has been seemed to be associated. From these two we can have a idea of linkage with the genetic factor. Next is the biochemical factor. So as aggress aggressiveness or the aggression conduct is an important features in conduct disorders. So in that context many biochemical factors has been said to be linked with conduct disorder. For example, it has been the studies has found that there is a correlation between elevated plasma level of testosterone and the aggressive behavior. Next, low level of 5 hydroxy indolacetic acid in CSF has been strongly correlated with the aggression and the violence in the adolescents. 
so in that correlational context we can say that these are the biochemical factors which may be correlated with the occurrence of conduct disorder next is the organic and the neurological factor so any traumatic brain injury seizures neurological damage it may also lead to aggression again developmental delay if it is present developmental delay if it is present among the children which may lead to poor social skill as well as there is below average intellectual capacity again these things may contribute some difficulties in the learning process again low self esteem may occur these all factors may lead to a tendency among the children to be engaged in some kind of disruptive behavior so developmental delay also may be a causative agent or causative factor for the conduct disorder among the children and the adolescents next psychosocial factor the environmental factor plays a very important role in the causation of conduct disorder so getting rejected by parents that parental rejection and the harsh parenting style these two are one of the these two are the very important psychosocial factors in the causation of different kind of mischievous conduct among the children then frequent shifting of parental figure as well as if there is a absence of father figure what it will have what it will lead to it will lead to some kind of lack of structured home environment and lack of supervision of the conduct of the children so that is why the children may get a chance or they may indulge in different kind of mischievous conduct then parents with antisocial personality disorder and alcohol dependence already we have discussed then parental permissiveness this is also one important uh, factor in the causation of conduct disorder so he, what happened here is that in this uh, par uh, like permissive parent so what happen they what they do parents are too liberal here and they provide very few disciplinary rules for their children they keep very low control or the discipline over their children so in that case what happen so the children also they have a tendency to just indulge in many kind of defiant or the dissocial behavior as because they know that their parents are very liberal and they are not keeping a very keen eye among the for their rules and a different kind of disciplinary behavior so that time also they may indulge in some kind of dissocial conduct then marital conflict and the divorce in parents and the association with the delinquent subgroup if the friends and the peer group if they are having the del uh, delinquent activities or the social activities so it may it may this um, by this also the children and adolescents they may get encouragement to indulge in this kind of activities so these are the different psychosocial factors which are playing a role in the conduct this uh, or the in the different kind of Uh, misconducts or a mischievous conduct among the children and the adolescents so in the summary uh, conduct disorder is a disorder that is uh, occurring during the childhood and the adolescence period we have discussed about the icd10 classification where it is coded as f91 as a conduct disorder with some sub classifications then uh, there are different characteristics features are involved as various kind of dissocial aggressive as a defiant conduct we have observed then the etiology of conduct disorder is very complex there are many biological psychosocial and uh, organic factors may play a role in the causation of conduct disorder so here students i have come to an end of this part 1 then part 2 will be followed with the treatment as well as the details of the nursing management so next video i'll be uploading with the part 2 so i hope you have understood the today's learning objective that you understood the definition then different classification then clinical features as well as the etiological issues with this i have kept some uh, self assessment test also you can go through by yourself and uh, check it with the slides whether you could have done it correct or not okay 
then these are few of the references from where I have taken the content. So anyway, thank you.